I'm uh, very happy that the uh, average age from yesterday to today went by about 20. We, had, we have a lot of demographers here. Uh, I have to be careful, especially when I go about means and medians and all of that stuff. Um, when, when I was young, I grew up in a kibbutz and I was uh, in charge of the water system in the orchards of the kibbutz from age 12 to age 18. So I have to apologize as a water system person for the breakdown of our main <laughs> water pipe this morning. Uh, we are fixing it. Uh, it will be um, repaired by the end of this session, hopefully. Um, we are so happy you have all come, uh, especially uh, today we are moving from the formalities to the real issues with very exciting panels and the four most important uh, mega subjects that YASA is working on. Uh, we are very grateful for the entire leadership of YASA for making uh, the trip to come here and to talk to you the panel uh, leaders and uh, the members of YASA that have taken upon themselves to be or to participate in these panels will expose you to a new world actually that is becoming very difficult to explain it to us old guys but somewhat easier uh, to explain it to you it's all computer systems that manage very complicated um, uh, systems. And then we do the system analysis. Yes, for International uh, Institute for uh, Advanced System Analysis. Um, the Institute was uh, has started, Albert is going to talk about it uh, later, as a research diplomacy uh, institute after the Cuban crisis. Uh, and I think it's uh, very timely <laughs> that we are celebrating 50 years moving from one country to another uh, with a really exceptional, very exciting uh, programs that YASA runs um, that we will now promote even further with the help of significant additional resources that we have gathered to uh, help YASA, help us, help YASA help us to kind of spread the word. So uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, ask the uh, Vice President for International Affairs, uh, Milet Shamir, to open the proceedings. Thank you, Milet. Thank you very much, uh, Itai. You began by saying that we gotten rid of all the formal uh, parts of the conference uh, last night. So I have the little bit that's <laughs> left for uh, today. Um, Dr. Albert van Jarsfeld, uh, Professor Itai Sene, Dr. Vered Blas, uh, distinguished colleagues and, and guests. Uh, it is my uh, formal duty, but also my true pleasure uh, to greet you this morning and to add my voice to those who I think last night have already welcomed uh, the International Institute of, for Applied Systems Analysis to Israel for this important uh, conference. I think I speak not just on behalf of uh, Tel Aviv University, but of all research universities in Israel when I say that it's really an honor uh, to be able to uh, have uh, uh, YASA accept the invitation to hold an annual conference uh, for the first time, I believe, uh, here in Israel. And of course, it is a particular honor because uh, we get to be hosts, as Itai has just mentioned, on the occasion of the celebration of YASA's uh, 50th uh, year. Um, it's a fascinating experience that I highly recommend, and I spent an hour doing so uh, last night, to read through the timeline uh, of YASA's uh, research achievements since it was founded at the height of the Cold War uh, by 12 nations from East, uh, from West, uh, in 1972. Um, if you look at this uh, timeline, I think that what you get as a whole is a story. And it's a remarkable story of how great scientists uh, from different countries working together in collaboration have had the wisdom and the talent to detect early on uh, the emergence of some of what today are widely recognized 
to be the world's largest challenges and to think creatively uh, of possible solutions. Sorry, technology is uh, fighting with me this morning. Uh, the most complex challenges that define our present decade, from climate change and aging populations to big tech overreach and sustainable development, were in fact identified and, and analyzed by YASA research as early as in the 1970s and 1980s. And these researchers have been crafting for 50 years now integrated science-based policies to help countries around the world face these challenges. Uh, it has taken far too long, uh, but today the world at large, including here in Israel, seems to finally come to a recognition of the magnitude of the environmental, social, and economic challenges, challenges that we face, and how critical it is for scientists to join forces across national borders and across disciplines uh, to innovate solutions that can usher us all into a better, a safer, and a more just future. Yasa's uh, 50 years experience and its, its dual strategy that Tel Aviv University certainly shares of international collaborations and of uh, interdisciplinarity in research uh, makes it an ideal partner uh, for these efforts. And I think I speak for everyone here when I say that we're truly delighted that Israel can count itself among the 23 partners uh, of Yasa hailing from five different continents. Undoubtedly, Israeli scientists and universities are able to make significant contributions uh, to YASA's core research areas. Uh, here at Tel Aviv University, for example, we've established over the past five years a series of research centers, including on climate change, on combating uh, pandemics, on health and longevity, um, on biodiversity, <coughs> on resilience, centers that operate by bringing together researchers from STEM faculties with social scientists, economists, law experts, management experts, humanities experts. Uh, you know, I said before, uh, Albert, that Yasa 50 years ago brought together East and West. Uh, East and West at Tel Aviv University means the East of campus where the STEM is and the West of campus where the humanities and the social, social sciences are. And bringing them together can be sometimes as much Almost as a challenge. As as <laughs> yes, but we try to do that as much as we can here. And I know that similar in initiatives are undertaken now in other Israel universities, of course. And uh, we'll be hearing today, I think, uh, some truly exciting research innovation that is being currently done uh, here in Israel on the core topics of, uh, of Yasa's uh, concerns. So Israeli science can contribute to Yasa's aims, but I think first and foremost, it has much to gain uh, by this collaboration. Uh, as vice president in charge of international collaborations, I'm enormously excited by the possibilities opened up uh, and now expanded for our researchers, particularly early career uh, faculty and our, also our graduate students, uh, to become part of YASA's various programs and research groups and to integrate into the very impressive uh, global network platforms that YASA has already managed to uh, form. I'm convinced that these opportunities for collaborative work and exchange of ideas can boost Israeli research in key areas and in very significant ways. Um, I will just close by saying that we count ourselves lucky to have Professor Itai Senad as a true and passionate champion of the collaboration with YASA. And I know that uh, our friends in the Ministry of Innovative, uh, Innovation, Science and Technology uh, work together with Itai to uh, uh, make this collaboration a truly strong one. Itai has been devoting a great deal of precious time and energy to fortify Israel partnership with YASA. And for that, uh, we owe him a debt of uh, gratitude. So we have a full and rich program ahead of us. I won't take any more uh, of our time other than to wish you all a very successful day, very productive day, and thank you very much. Of course, nothing of this would have happened if it wasn't for Vered Blas, who is really the focal point and the person who has done it all, the person to go to whenever you have any doubts or questions about Yasa, you go to Vered and she explains to you all the details and everything needs to be done. I want to extend a, a special thanks to uh, Rami Aroni from the uh, ministry who has worked tirelessly uh, to help us uh, uh, forge this relationship. Uh, to Gansen Palais, who is the director, Dr. Gansen Palais, who is the director of international communication 
who is with us, without whom it wouldn't get anywhere. Thank you, Gansen. Uh, we really appreciate it. And of course, to one of the most uh, renowned demographers uh, currently working, to um, uh, Wolfgang Lutz, who is with us and will be in the panel on demography today, that has uh, been so gracious to uh, come over here for about 36 hours in his very, very busy schedule and to stay an extra hour or two to stay with our young and not so young demographers uh, this morning in, in the panel. So uh, since I gave you the secret code, anything you want or may want to ask or know about Yasa, you go to Verd, I will let Verd talk for herself. Thank you, Itai, and good morning, everybody. It's, it's a pleasure to, to see you all. I would like to first uh, uh, thank the colleagues from YASA that made this effort to come. Uh, uh, I know how busy is their, all their schedules, so that's really appreciated. Uh, I also want to thank Itai for, for really taking the leadership here and on a pers really personal involvement in everything. Uh, uh, and this is also not obvious in our system. Uh, and I do want to congratulate you all to that you came here today. You know, I've, my journey with YASA started uh, in 2016, but I would say it's five years out of the 50. And uh, we were kind of five people all together, I think, in Israel. And now for me to see this multiplier already happening is very encouraging. And that's the goal of today. So it's to slowly but surely uh, expose all of the universities in Israel and all of the researchers and colleagues coll 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 and everyone that is in somehow connected to one of the topics that Yasa is working on uh, to be part and to contribute the research. And you get a lot back and you, you have a lot to give. And even if you don't see yourself as a modeling person, uh, there is so much to do that can uh, tie all the things together. So I would like to thank you all for taking the time uh, to come today. And uh, I look forward for really interesting and fruitful panels. Thank you so much, and we will now uh, move on to let uh, Albert uh, uh, tell you all that it is all about. So, Albert, please. The microphone is yours. A That's a trick. Yeah. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate that. Um, thanks for this opportunity to talk to you about IASA and uh, what we do. Uh, we're not a normal institution in a sense because we do things a little bit differently and I'll try and give you a flavor for that. And hopefully from the conversations today, later on in the parallel sessions as well, you will find that there are lots of opportunities for people, even if they're not strictly modelers. Uh, if you can strengthen yourself only in the areas of Python and R, you can go a very long way in terms of actually moving your career into that space. You don't necessarily have to be an extraordinary mathematician to do that. But I'll try and explain to you what happens in that space. So thank you for this opportunity. Mm. No, it's stuck. Ah, there we go. All right, thank you. All right, so IASA, um, we're based in Luxembourg, just outside Vienna, in this wonderful building, uh, the Schloss, which is the Habsburg Summer Palace, for those of you that know something about the history of Vienna and its environments. Um, we there, of course, as guests of the Austrian government that have been the kind hosts for IASA for the last 50 years. And hopefully that relationship will continue into the future as well. We are a multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary institute. Um, we focus our research on those challenges that we feel are either too big for an individual nation or a country to deal with. In other words, they are global issues but they also focus on work that we feel are shared issues amongst nations around the world, uh, such as migration and demographic issues, as we talked a little bit earlier. So this will give you a, a sense of um, where we come from 
uh, I think Professor Shamir indicated earlier, Yasa was established in the midst of the Cold War uh, as a consequence of the Cuban crisis by two people, uh, driven by President Johnson and uh, Premier Kozigan in those days, to say we have to establish an institute that will allow researchers to do research across the boundaries of the Cold War and to find common ground. Primarily because research is a common language, uh, science is a common language around the world, and, and they wanted to use that as a leverage. So IASA was born out of science diplomacy at the end of the day, in other words, to use science to build bridges between communities and nations across the world, and we continue in that legacy as an institution moving forward. This is our current membership uh, around the world, uh, growing. Uh, we have two kinds of members in the dark blue, which are full national members, and then we have regional memberships in the lighter color across Africa to bring on board areas of the world that may not be able to afford to become a full member uh, at this stage. So it's a new model of membership that we've introduced to broaden the participation of nations in the work of EASA around the world. If you look at our staff makeup, uh, we're about one-third natural scientists and engineers, social scientists, and then mathematicians and others, uh, you know, software programmers and so on, uh, other people across the institution. So we really have a multiple of skills across the institution from 52 countries at the moment, uh, and our collaborations stretch across 64 countries uh, in any one year on average as we work uh, within the institution. We, of course, focus on these things, uh, the complexity issues. We'll give you some time to absorb this figure, okay, but, uh, uh, but don't worry. <laughs> but uh, don't worry. But when you're a policymaker and you have to make complex decisions about what you should do, you quickly realize that when you prod the system in one place, there's going to be consequences or unintended consequences elsewhere that there are feedbacks and there are synergies potentially possible within this complexity. And the, much of the work that we do at IASA is to try and to better understand these kinds of complex environments, to unravel them to a degree where we can make proposals about policy interventions that hopefully will avoid some of the most obvious and the, most e the easiest unintended consequences uh, that may result elsewhere, to try and find win-win solutions out of this complexity that we face. And the tools primarily we use are the models that have been developed at IASA over many years. Uh, you'll see there the message model, which is our energy uh, planning model. We have our water model, a community water model. We have our air quality model gains. We have our land use models uh, in, in EPIC and so on, and Globiome, which is our integrated land use uh, uh, platform. But I think this just gives you a sense of the variety of sectoral models that exist at IASA. But besides these sectoral models, we also aspire and work very hard to make sure that all our models speak to two variables in particular. The first one on the top left-hand side, which is the population uh, model that we have at IASA. Clearly, population has an impact on everything that we do in this landscape. And so therefore, IASA, I think, and this is my own biased view, we have, I think, the best population model in the world. Um, some people may argue that, but I think uh, we really have something that's special in terms of what it can do and deliver, and those that watched Wolfgang's talk last night will understand what I'm saying. But we also inter try and integrate our analysis with the economy of a particular region of analysis that we're looking at at the same time. The strength of EASA is not only these different models, but our ability to make these models talk to each other. In other words, that we can explore the synergies and the trade-offs that exist between different, uh, different sectors, and at the same time, to say, avoid these unintended consequences as best as we possibly can. So, at the moment, we have six research programs at EASA. The first one is Advancing Systems Analysis, which is the research program, which is our methods group, if you like developing new methods and new modeling approaches and strengthening them. And there's an awful lot of work going on in areas like agent-based modeling at the moment. Uh, if you have an interest in that, look it up. Um, we have our biodiversity and natural resources group that you're going to be talking to today. We have our energy, climate, and environment uh, research group, which again will be represented here today. Our population and just societies group, which is represented by Wolfgang. 
our Economic Frontiers Group, which is a new program at EASA, and then our Strategic Initiatives, which is also a new program, but is really driven towards trying to do joint projects with our membership countries at the end of the day about what their priorities are and how we engage with them. And you'll hear quite a bit about that in the morning as well. So, first time Israel joined EASA was in 2017. Um, we have had multiple research partners over the years that have engaged with EASA on an individual basis. Um, we've had some exchange in terms of capacity building and some joint publications so far. But this momentum, as far as we're concerned, is not really enough to really shift the landscape as far as Israeli participation in, in the global endeavors that we engage with as an institution, but not only for the global sake, but also for benefit to you as a nation at the end of the day. So we hope we can strengthen this, and this is what this engagement for us is all about. These are some of the obvious partners in the past, since the 2017. Uh, some 12 projects, some seven of them are on the go at the moment. We can provide you with details if anybody wants to know. Um, but today we'll further explore potential relationships and partnerships in the area of demography, biodiversity, energy and transport, and water with you in our parallel sessions to follow. I know that the energy model seems to be making progress, which is our energy planning model in terms of its engagement with the uh, Israeli government uh, through e the researchers that are involved in this. And we hope that that progress will uh, continue into the future. I think clearly it seems like the ministry is starting to come to grips with some of the advantages that some of our models can provide to them in terms of their own national planning, but also thinking a little bit broadly uh, about global change issues. We are launching a very interesting uh, integrated model in the biosphere space um, and trying to produce from that engagement a product that we call the Global Biosphere Outlook, which will happen hopefully in the foreseeable future. And those of you involved in the biodiversity discussions today can also think about how you can possibly contribute to that. And also whether there's scope and room for an analysis around Israel as a focal area or a focal point maybe as far as the global biodiversity outlook is concerned. We're hoping this is gonna materialize pretty soon. There's a project called the if you can't see it now, it's uh, Resist. Uh, if you look at the red letters there, it's behind the little label there. The Resist project, which, you, which again is one of our strategic initiatives projects that we've launched uh, that will involve um, Israel as a case study. This will give you a sense of what this work is all about. But this will be a key topic of conversation in the parallel session on biodiversity. So I'm going to leave it for people there to focus on that and see how they'd like to take that initiative forward. But I just want to emphasize to you that already there's something happening where hopefully Israel is going to be a key partner for us to take this project forward. Um, this is some planned work in progress, uh, the SARA project, uh, which involves Ben Gurion University uh, as a potential partner. They're looking for funding for this project at the moment, so it's a it's work in progress. Um, but just so that everybody is aware, of what's happening uh, in terms of EASA and Israeli collaborations. But for us, most importantly, I think also is the issue of capacity development. And uh, we hope that we can share with you some of the many capacity development opportunities that exist at EASA. We, of course, encourage research staff exchanges with EASA for short-term periods or for longer-term visits. Um, flexible when manner and what's available and what people can accommodate and, and do. Um, we have training opportunities for mid-career PhDs, in other words, people that are sort of halfway through their PhD to come spend three months in our Young Scientist Summer Program that we have at, at TIASA. It's a competitive application process, but we'd encourage people that ap those applications are open at the moment. You would spend June, July, and August of next year if you were successful in the application now. The idea is you bring your PhD project to EASA, uh, you work with some systems analysis people there to see what are the opportunities to turn some of your work into a systems analysis uh, approach and maybe add another chapter to your thesis at the end of the day that you can turn into a publication together with the ASA researchers as part of the outcome of the YSSP program. And so we encourage people to consider that avenue and then 
another avenue that we feel very strongly about is postdoc opportunities. In other words, where people can actually come and spend some time, anything from six months to a year or two years in some instances. We have an example sitting far in the corner there uh, of one of your postdocs that's now going into a second year at EASA. Uh, and uh, I hope that many of you will follow suit and uh, also join us at EASA. Sandwich programs are very popular as well, where people spend some time with their postdoc supervisors here at IASA, uh, sorry, in Israel, and then move a year to, into IASA with a co-supervisor from, from IASA, and then come back again uh, in the third year of a postdoc or whatever the case may be. So we consider all these opportunities, and I hope you will exploit some of them as we move forward. So those are the two I've just mentioned. And these are some of the people that have engaged with IASA over the past, for both from the postdoctoral and the YSSP programs from 2017. We at IASA, of course, are very proud of our staff that we have and attracted from around the world. I indicated to you they're from 52 countries. Uh, these are currently the people globally that are considered in the top 1% in their disciplines in terms of their citation profiles. So there's a significant group of people there that have significant strength. Um, and I always tell young people, if you want to take your career to the next level, as you find the person with the best possible track record and you find their lab coat and you hang on to that lab coat for as long as you can, because that's what takes you into your next phase of your career. So there are good people that you can hang on to at IASA that will take your career forward. So think about that as well. Okay, and of course, K1 RIAE, um, that some of you will get to know, uh, is one of the 23 global researchers that's recognized in three fields uh, at currently in the top 1%. Uh, he's from the energy program at EASA, director of the energy program at EASA. These are our research outputs as an institution, just to give you a sense of what we achieve with 350 researchers. Um, we produce over 700 papers a year, and you can see our other me metrics there if you were interested in those. Um, as far as our high impact publications are concerned, we produced in 2021 70 papers in Nature, Science, PNAS, and Lancet. Uh, if you consider the top tier journals that we aspire to. So we as an institution achieve research excellence at the same time as trying to produce policy relevance and policy impact across the landscape in which we work. And I'll leave it there, and then we can start the conversation. Thank you so much for your time, Ita. Those of you who can, I will uh, give away the name of uh, Dor Friedman, who sits there in the corner. I'm giving his name because he did what I want all of you to do. He took him upon himself to engage with Yasa, and the rest is history. So really, you brought, we brought all of you here so that you do what he did, which means take advantage of the special programs that Albert mentioned. We are here to help you. We know the ropes. We know how to get there. We know how to submit the applications. Uh, any university, any group of researchers. And one of my closest friends right now, uh, Paul Romer, became very famous for pointing out that it's all about human capital. You are the human capital. We have the structure with YASA and with the participation of the universities that are more than eager to connect you to YASA and to the amazing opportunities that await you there. So engage, engage, engage. I think, Albert, you mentioned five times. I count five times, engage. So I mentioned three more times, and soon we'll get to 10. Engage, engage, engage. Um, and today, uh, as should be, the leader is Vered Blas. We will now, uh, uh, Vered will explain, we will split into four panels out of each such panel. Panel, I expect an engagement in the YASA network. I think that Albert said something that all of us more advanced scientists know. When you're young, you need some more experienced scholar 
to help you out. Yasa has the most outstanding, significant scholars to help you out. Take advantage of this amazing opportunity through the panels, come back to us, ask how to engage, how to apply, we will help you and catch door in the corridors if you can and ask him how to do it, he'll give you some hints. Uh, Verend, the floor and the audience is yours. Thank you again, everyone. Um, so what we'll do now is uh, we will break through the four panels, um, some uh, uh, logistics. Uh, so first, as Itai said, unfortunately, the water in the building is still, uh, is still under construction. Soon it will be uh, OK, Please but so. till then, if any restroom issues come up, it's in the next building. So ask us. We are sorry for this inconvenience, but uh, uh, this is the best at the moment. We will uh, divide uh, now uh, to four groups. Uh, and the main idea is that you get to hear the Yasa representative and some Israel is walking on those topics. And then we create a discussion about opportunities for future collaborations or ideas, even if this is already going or something completely new. And then we will come back. Uh, so this will happen from, uh, from 10 o'clock to 12.30. OK, and in each panel, the moderator will organize the time with the needed break, or uh, uh, each panel is structured a bit different. And then we will uh, convene, back, convene back here at 12.30 for uh, closing uh, remarks and some discussion. Each moderator will summarize what came up in his group. And we will uh, uh, close the session. Uh, and of course, we will do a follow up based on what will come, uh, come up. So it's really an opportunity for everyone here in the room to get engaged, if you need to say it again, to think where does it meet you and your research and your goals and your, uh, and your uh, level in your research. And, uh, and again, the door is always open. And everyone in YASA is so friendly to really find every opportunity and make sure that it happens and cultivate it. So um, for those of you that didn't follow the program, I will just read for you the rooms where we are, each panel, and you can slowly go there. So the biodiversity and agriculture panel will stay here. OK, we are staying in this room. Uh, the uh, demography panel is in room 527. OK, both of, the, of those panels are live streamed. OK, so any of your uh, colleagues uh, uh, can watch it. Uh, the water panel is in room 505. OK, uh, and the uh, energy and transport uh, people we will go together. It's in, actually in the minus one floor in the new meeting room there. OK, sorry. Also, so um, uh, and last thing is when we convene back in 12, 12.30, it will not be in this room. It will actually be in room 201, OK? But we will make sure that all the panel moderators know where to, where to take you. And, uh, and you have some refreshment outside. You can also take it with you now, so you don't need to go back and forward. And at the end, we will have, of course, a, a light lunch served after we uh, uh, finish the last session.